Praise the Lord! This here is Tommy Sides, American missionary and Christian music artist, serving the Lord here in Mapumalunga, South Africa. And today I want to speak to you a little bit in the Word uh, concerning the election for 2020. This is the first Saturday of December in 2020, and things are progressing slowly. So we had a little bit of good news this week with that bombshell of a video that came out in the Atlanta uh, situation there. So we just keep praying that more evidence comes out. Amen. Now, the last video that I did, I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can find that because you'll want to watch that too if you haven't already. I talked about a vision that my wife saw as we were shortly after the election we were on a, a three-day fast and uh, so we walked around the lakes here and we're praying and you know seeking the Lord fasting and my wife had a vision and uh, she saw Donald Trump as an eagle being bound with with a heavy chain and six pillars deep in the ground and that that eagle was couldn't budge he couldn't move until it started to rain once the rain came the soil became loose and those pillars began coming out amen and the eagle flew off and that is indicative of what's going to happen i really believe that god is going to set donald trump free from all this bondage we just need to keep praying and fasting though praise god because we need to do our part just like i spoke in the last video about esther and how she asked all the people of the land please pray for me for three days pray and fast seek the lord so that i can go before the king and uh and they did so if she had just fasted and prayed herself she might not have had a good outcome but she asked everyone in the kingdom to also join her in prayer and that's what we need to do we need to make this a corporate uh event we need to pray uh, and seek the Lord now today I want to speak to you about Peter and there's one similarity that Peter had with Donald Trump in, in, in as far as my wife's vision anyway that the eagle was bound with a chain a heavy chain and Peter the rock the man that Jesus Christ himself said, on this rock, I will build my church. You know, friends, when the Lord has a purpose for you, all the powers of hell can come against you. And it will be for naught. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Romans 8, 31. Who can be against you? <laughs> the devil, his demons, the Democratic Party, Joe Biden. It doesn't matter friends. It doesn't matter because no one can be against you if God is for you if you know uh, They say that William Hurst Just said two words when Billy Graham was just a young man and he was preaching in a tent there in Los Angeles and uh, He wasn't known known nationwide but many think and speculate that Hurst went into that tent meeting uh, unknown you know maybe disguised or whatever and he was so impressed with with Billy Graham that he just sent two words out on a teletype to all of his newspapers that he owned uh, throughout the country he just said puff Graham puff Graham and you know all those newspapers they began to run front page stories about Billy Graham he became an instant sensation overnight now when God is on his throne, he just has to look at his angels. Amen? He doesn't have to get all excited and, and you know, he doesn't have to like make a big story. Uh, you know, he, he, don't, he don't have to like get all excited. No. <clears throat> all he's got to do is just sit there on the throne and look at, look at Michael the Archangel and just say, Puff Trump. Puff Trump, amen. That's all he's got to say. Just, just bless him. Give him a blessing. Hallelujah. I like that. 
Amen. And you know, when God speaks from his throne, that's just what it is. It don't matter what the devil or anybody else thinks or says. So we just need to believe God and just keep praying and fasting and, and repent and get right and, you know. But anyway, in Acts 12, Herod, King Herod at the time, had already arrested James and had him put to death with the sword. And when he saw that this pleased the crowd, he said, get me Peter as well. I want to have him arrested. So they arrested Peter. And uh, they put him inside of a, of a jail cell that was specially designed like a, like a solitary confinement. Because it says that they put, they put a squad, four squads of soldiers, four soldiers each. That 16 soldiers were guarding Peter. These were heavily trained soldiers. And they were given strict orders that if anything happens to Peter, it's curtains for them, right? So they, they made sure they were guarding him. It says that Peter was even sleeping between two soldiers. And he wasn't even clothed, you know. So, I mean, even if he'd have got up, where, where, is he, where are you going to go? But it says that the, an angel of the Lord appeared in that cell. And why did an angel of the Lord appear? Well, let's see. Get my glasses on here. So, it says right here, verse 5 of Acts 12, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Hey, amen. You know, the church was praying for, for good old Peter. And that's what we're doing right now, amen. We're praying for Donald Trump. Many of you on your way to work, on your way home, you truck drivers. Man, I used to be a truck driver back home. Man, that's all, you know, one of the things, one, somebody saw me on uh, in a store one day. They said, yeah, I saw you uh, in your semi truck the other day. I said, yeah. They said, my wife thinks you're crazy. I said, why is that? She said, he said, because you were talking to yourself. <laughs> I said, man, <laughs> I was praying, hallelujah. When, I, when you see my lips moving in the truck, that's because I'm, I'm communicating with the Lord. I sometimes have me a glory hallelujah time in that truck. Amen. And uh, we're peculiar people, ain't we? Amen. So anyway, the church was praying for Peter. And the night before Herod was to release him for trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. Ooh, God sent his angel and it says the night before Herod was to bring him to trial. In other words, Peter had probably been in that jail for, for a while. We don't know. Was it a week? Was it a month? We don't know. But the very night, at the last moment, you know, and I believe God is going to deliver Trump. It might even be at the last moment. When we when everybody's thinking, man, this is like this is it, man. This is, you know, this is finishing claw, as they say here in South Africa. That's it. It's finished. But uh, with God, God's never late and God's God's never early. He's on time. <laughs> Amen. So with the light in the in the jail cell, the angel, it says suddenly, as the angel appeared and the light shone in the cell, he struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. He had two chains and they fell off his wrist. But the, the angel poked him, <laughs> struck him in the side. Wake up. Amen. That's what the God needs to do for us. Amen. He needs to wake us up. Sometimes God has to like give us a nice little smack. Wake up. You know, we got things to do. And, but he said, quick, hurry up, get dressed, get your clothes on, get your sandals on. We got to get out of here. But what I find interesting is even in that quick hurry up moment, the angel cared enough to even tell him, and don't forget to put your cloak on. Don't forget your coat. It's cold outside. The angel was thinking about Peter. Amen. And God loves Donald Trump. 
He does. He really does. Even in this moment. Hallelujah. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes. I'm just reading over that again. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. The angel said, Peter followed him out of the prison. Let me just turn the page here. So Peter followed him out. But Peter had no idea what the angel was doing or what what was really happening was really happening. In other words, Peter thought, you know, he had to pinch himself like, is this real? He thought he was seeing a vision. You ever had a moment like that that you just thought, this can't be real, this can't be happening? Amen. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And what do you think happened to that iron gate? It opened for them, for them by itself and they went through it. Amen. A big iron gate was in front of that prison and it just opened up by itself. And they walked right through. And when they walked, they, they, they uh, says here that they went about a full city block. And when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. Rescued me from Her Herod's clutches. Right now, the Democratic Party and their evil plans of thievery have, have put Donald Trump, they, they think they've got him in, in their clutches, right? They think they got him. They got him bound up. They got him tied up. They think they've got, they got their plan, they've got it all figured out. But let me tell you something, friend. God is in the deliverance business. <laughs> Amen. He's in the deliverance business. Praise God. He, can, he knows how to take those chains off. When this happened, and when this had dawned on Peter, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, where many people had gathered and were praying. He decided where he was going to go. And in the middle of the night, these people were still up. Probably just had a few couple torches in the house. And they were praying by candlelight or whatever, or oil lamp. They were praying. They were seeking God. Oh, God, they were praying. Deliver Peter. Deliver Peter. You ever, you ever prayed for something really hard, but then when God answered you, finally, you were like, you couldn't believe it? Well, you've been praying for it the whole time. <laughs> Amen. Well, it says that Peter came and he knocked at the door. And a, a servant girl, Rhoda, came. Now, it wasn't just the door to the house. It says it was the outer door. So she came out of the house, went to the front yard. There was a, a big wall, evidently, maybe around the, the, the house. Because it says the outer door. So he was knocking and, and she heard his voice. She got excited. She didn't even open the door for Peter. It says that she ran back and she told everybody, Peter's at the door, Peter's at the door. And they looked at her and they said, are you out of your mind? Are you out of your, and it says that she kept insisting. He really is, I heard his voice. And then they said, well, maybe it's his angel. So then they came and they opened up the outer door. Now I like, I like one thing, while, while she's inside, having this big talk, trying to convince them to at least come to the door. What does it say Peter was doing the whole time? It says right here in Acts 12, 16, but Peter kept on knocking. Amen. I like that. He just kept on knocking. He wasn't giving up. He was just knocking. He was going to knock until that door finally opened. And that's what we need to do. We need to just keep knocking. Amen. Keep knocking and believing. You know, I like that Bob Dylan song, Knock on Heaven's Door. We just need to knock on Heaven's Door. Keep knocking. Amen. Okay, and so when they, when they saw him, it says that when they finally opened up the door and saw Peter, they were astonished. <laughs> Amen. They were astonished. I like that word. You know what? To be astonished, it's like, whoa. It's like, wow. <laughs> Amen. It's like, I can't believe it. They opened up that door. I mean, here is a man that's in a, in a special 
guarded prison, uh, and he's going to be on trial. It, the other apostles already been killed with the sword, and they didn't fart around in those days. You know, if they judged you as guilty, you usually got executed that day. So they waited until the uh, feast of the Passover, or uh, says uh, unleavened bread. The feast of unleavened bread was over. That's right. So they waited for that uh, feast of unleavened bread to be over. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. And so once that was over, they didn't have to worry about anything. All the political mumbo jumbo was done. You know, it's like, you don't want to execute somebody on Easter, right? Or Christmas Day. So they just waited until maybe after New Year's, you know, give it a few days, January 3rd or 4th. You know, I'm talking about our culture, you know. We wouldn't want to execute somebody on Christmas Day, would we? So we waited, so that was them. You know, they didn't want to, they wouldn't, didn't want to execute Peter on a holiday, so they waited. But you know, God had a plan. God delivered Peter. It says the last day, the, the next day he was supposed to go on trial. He probably would have been executed that very day. And God snatched him out of the devil's hands. God made those chains in that jail cell fall down. God sent his angel into that dark cell. And the whole cell just became lit up. And those guards were put into a deep sleep. And God was willing, now get this, God created Peter and he created those 16 soldiers. Don't you think those 16 soldiers were, were something that was, you know, God created them. God says, if I even know that so many sparrows fall to the ground, don't I care about you? 16 Roman soldiers. But God had already spoken. Jesus Christ said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And so God had no alternative. He had to deliver Peter because Peter was going to be used regardless. And so those 16 soldiers most likely meant their death. They were probably executed summarily, quickly, because they let Peter go. 16 men lost their lives so that Peter could be free. And God knew that when he sent that angel in there, it meant the death warrant for those 16 soldiers. But you know, when God has a purpose and God has a plan for a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. God will do whatever it takes to deliver that person. And I want to speak to some of you that are guilty of sins against Donald Trump. You are like those Roman soldiers. You better be careful. You better repent. If you know something, you got evidence, you need to come clean. Because God is in, in the business of deliverance. He is going to deliver Donald Trump. And you better get your act straight. And you better speak up. Because it's not going to be good. When that eagle finally gets free, and he's soaring in that high sky, and he's got his eagle eyes, he's going to be looking down upon those that have done him wrong. He's going to know. And he's going he's gonna to take revenge. And God's going to let him take revenge. Because this is a coup, what's happening in the United States. This is a, this is treasonous offenses, offenses that are happening right now. And uh, I just hope that true justice is meted out to all those that are guilty. Well, so Lord, we just pray right now for Donald Trump's freedom. We pray that the chains of Satan be loosed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we just speak that these chains be loosed. And we pray, Lord God, that you bind Satan. Hallelujah. I pray that Satan will fall from the sky like lightning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that Romans 8.31 does say that if God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we thank you for giving us our great president, and we pray a blessing on him that he will be delivered, that you will send your angels to do mighty works in Jesus' name.
Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The sun is starting to go down here in South Africa. And uh, I just want to thank you for coming and watching our little video here, this little teaching that we have. And I'm going to try to be up more often. So you keep, you make sure you subscribe to our channel and, and like our, our video here. And in the description box below, I'm going to put the other video about the, uh, the vision my wife had. I'll put that in there and maybe a couple other videos in there. So uh, keep us in your thoughts and prayers. We love you very much. And until next time, this is Tommy Sides saying see you later and send a holy kiss to you. God bless.